Today I want to show you how to creatively work with maps in Apple Keynote presentations. Typically a map is a static slide like this with a lot of information and it's hard for people to know what you want to talk about. Today I want to show you four techniques to help you with this. And the first one is called Spotlight. It's where you have the map and you create this spotlight that shines light on one specific area to draw attention. Another one is Zoom. Very similar. It uses Apple Keynote's Magic Move to zoom into a specific area on the map to get their attention. There's also flexible or nonlinear ways to create these presentations as well. In this version, you have images or shapes or something on screen where you wanna to go to a specific part of your presentation, but you don't have to go in order. Traditionally, you might just advance through these slides one to the next, but here, your audience can pick or you can pick where you wanna go. For example, we have three locations on here. You can click on this flag over India and go right to the Taj Mahal. Using the shape up here, you can go back to that home screen and choose now to go to Galaxy's Edge in Southern California. Or if you're ready to be done, click on this icon over here and be on your final screen. Finally, our last and most creative use of a map is what's called a path. In this situation, you create a specific area of the map where you want an object to travel. And so we can zoom in here and show the flight path from the United States over to France. And you can have that line show up or you can make it invisible. It's a great way to show travel of planes, of ships, or even of people or vehicles over land. We've got Keynote open on our Mac. And this is the choose a theme page where you can pick a different theme for your Keynote presentation. Today we'll go to the basics theme and just choose white. Little trick here today, in our presentation, we're gonna choose view, show object list. And we're gonna make these slides a little bit wider here in the slide navigator. So we're going to start with our spotlight example. So we'll change over here in the top right of our inspector. We'll change the slide layout from title to photo. Once we have that, we'll click on the bottom right corner here, this little photo icon, and it brings up a window where we can pick a picture. We've already set up a folder that has the specific photo in it. I recommend that when you do a presentation, you have folders ready to go. So we'll double click on this icon and it replaces it full screen. This is our first slide. Now we'll go to the top left of our screen. We'll right click on that slide and choose duplicate. Then go to the slide itself, right click and duplicate this image. On the screen, we're gonna to go to the top. We're gonna to add a shape because it's a spotlight. We're simply gonna choose a circle that shows up here in the center. Today, we're gonna to highlight Australia. So we'll bring our circle down and make it bigger than Australia. If you hold the shift key, it keeps it a perfect circle while you drag. And now with that circle selected, hold the command key and then click on the map. Then on your screen, go all the way to the top left and choose format, image, mask with selection. When you do that, you can't see a whole lot right now, but you can see that there's a circle there around Australia. Now here comes the next part. We'll tap off the slide and we'll go over here on the side to the color fill. This is for the background of the slide. We're gonna change this to black. Then we'll click where we're on that photo, and then we'll go over here and double click on opacity and type 10. And now we look at our slide, we have a very bright Australia down here in the corner and a very dark screen. It's a little bit of a stark contrast, so to give it a little bit more effect, we'll click on that circle. Then we'll come over here in our inspector, and for shadow, we'll choose this middle one. We're gonna bump up the blur to 40. For offset, we're gonna choose zero, leave opacity at 50%, and then instead of being black, this one will be white. And now we have that glow of a spotlight around our image. One more thing to do now to make this all work, we will go over here to the top left, click on that first slide, then we'll go back over to the right hand side to our inspector, tap animate, add effect, dissolve, and then bring this down to 0.7 seconds. We look at our slide and tap preview, we can see it will dissolve and be a spotlight on Australia. That's one creative way to engage your audience to a specific area of your map for your presentation. Next, we'll create what we call a zoom using Apple's magic move. So on the top left side of our screen, we'll add a slide, we'll choose photo again, we'll drag that down here below those previous two. And again, on our screen, we'll go down to the bottom right corner, click on that icon to replace the photo, and again, have your photos ready to go. For this one, we have a new map image with some thumbtacks in it. We'll insert, it'll fill the screen. Now very important for this kind of presentation is to make sure you have the exact same slide ready to go. We're gonna come over here to the slide navigator and we're gonna right click on that slide and choose duplicate. Now I have an identical slide. Now we'll go over to the slide itself and we'll zoom out, click on our image and we'll drag it. So we wanna focus on London, put that in the center. 
Now we can go back up to the top, zoom, fit slide, back where we were before. Now to make this all happen, on the left hand side here, we'll click on our first slide, move over to the inspector on the right hand side, we'll click add an effect and go down to magic move. On your screen it will give you a warning, that's okay, the slides are identical. We'll go back up on the right hand side and we'll make this a little faster, bringing it down to 0.7, that's a good amount. And now when we preview that, zooms in to that area of the slide you want to show. And that's simply how you make a zoom. A third way to be creative with your map is to make a flexible or nonlinear presentation. So what we're gonna do is go down here and again, we'll choose add a slide, but this time we're gonna choose a blank slide. We have our slide set up here. We're gonna go over to the inspector on the right hand side, tap anywhere on your slide, go over to the right hand side of the inspector, choose format. And then for fill, we want to use an advanced gradient fill. The first color, we're gonna click on that square, make sure it's highlighted. We will choose crayons from our list of colors. You can see I have a lot of custom colors in here. We'll go down and choose ocean. For the second color in our gradient, we will choose midnight, and then we'll choose this one that radiates from the center. Close our color window. We look at our presentation. It has this nice look here. Come up to the top center. We'll choose a shape. We'll click in here and just type map. Have this nice world map we can click on that brings it to the center of the screen really small. We're going to show you a little trick here. Go over to the right hand side of your screen to your inspector to arrange. We know that this slide is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So we're going to match the height. Make sure constraint proportions is clicked so that it doesn't get deformed. And we'll type 1080, enter. And now we go back. That image, we drag it up, is the same height as our screen. When you move it on the screen, these yellow guidelines come up to show you it's centered from top to bottom. If we move it left to right, another one will show it's centered on the screen. That's great. But now we also want to add some color. So we'll go over here to the top right under style, color. We'll pick this green. And now we have a nice little map. Here is just a little pro tip for you. When you have that selected, go to the top of the screen to arrange and choose lock. And now whatever else we do, we won't be able to move around and mess up our map. It'll stay in one spot. To make this presentation really flexible. We'll come back up here to the center again, choose shape. This time we're gonna type in location and a location pin comes up. We'll click on that. We have it on our screen. What we're going to do is go over with this location flag to the right hand side here to our inspector. And we're gonna add a line border. That's very thick. So we're gonna bring this down to two points. Looks pretty good for that spot. Let's add a shadow. We'll click and add the center one, and that's ready to go. But we need two more of these. So let's first drag this one over here near India. We'll right click on it, duplicate, drag this one over to France. We want to change the color now. And so if we come back out over here to the right hand side to our inspector, we can change the color fill, make it a nice bold red. Maybe to make that stand out more, we'll choose white for our border. Let's now click on this blue original one again, right click on it duplicate and drag this one over to Southern California. Then let's go back over here to our inspector and change the color to orange. Now we have all of our flags. These will be linked to different slides. You can go anywhere you want, but we need to add those slides to our presentation. So come back over here to the top, click add a slide. This will be a photo and then come over here to the left hand side of your screen where that new photo is right click on it, duplicate, right click, duplicate, come back to that first one. And again, we're going to go over to the bottom corner and we're gonna click on this image. We have a folder set up with these photos ready to go. So for that first one, I'm going to choose the Taj Mahal. That fills the screen. I would like the top to not be cut off. And so if you click on this image and go over here to the very right, under image, you can choose edit mask. When you come back to your screen, you can now drag the photo down to where what you see is on the screen. And then the bottom center here, just click done. Second photo, come over here, click on it, then move across to that bottom right corner. Look at that icon. We go to that folder. We want this one to be the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. So we'll double click on that. Again, we have the same issue. Part of the Eiffel Tower has been chopped off. And so we'll come over to the right and choose edit mask. Come back to our image and drag it down until the top is appearing on the screen. Go back to the bottom center here and click done. Our final image over here on the bottom left We'll click on that one, move our way across to the bottom right hand part of the screen, click and choose a little fun one, Galaxy's Edge for our final image. That one actually looks pretty good on the screen, ready to go. So now you're gonna do is come back to this first slide here and we're gonna create links for each of these flags. So on your screen, take note of what number these slides are. If you look over here on the left hand side is a number, six for the Taj Mahal, seven for the Eiffel Tower, 
eight down here for Galaxy's Edge. So we'll come over here, start with the Taj Mahal. That was slide number six. We'll click on this flag, right click and choose add link to slide. Click on slide, go down to number six, click on this link. The Eiffel Tower was number seven. So we'll right click, add link, slide number seven, click on the orange one, right click, add link, slide, click on slide, slide eight. That is almost done, but not complete. When you are doing a presentation, you want to be able to come back to this menu screen or table of contents screen. So if we go over here to that first slide, we're on the slide, we go to the top of the screen and choose shape. This time, just type globe for fun. We use a very simple basic one here. Shows up on screen. This is gonna be a navigation tool. So we're gonna drag it over here so it's not so noticeable. We'll come over to the inspector on the right hand side to make some changes. We'll change the color to black. The opacity, we'll set it 10%. So now when we look at that screen, it's barely visible, but we know it's there. Right click on it, choose add link, slide, and then we'll choose slide number one. Now we wanna click on that, right click, duplicate. And then we can use the guides and drag this all the way over to the right hand side of the screen where they're even we need to create an ending slide and so we'll click on the last slide that we have go up to the top add slide and choose blank white is a bit harsh so we'll come over here to the inspector for color fill choose gradient make the top this gray the bottom this black now you have a nice subtle look to your screen it's a gradient fill on your slide when we're going back to this slide here and looking at those links, this one we can click on the arrow, choose edit, and now choose slide nine, which is our very last simply blank slide. And this is in good shape. We want to use these more places. So click on one of these, hold the command key down, click on the other, and then you either can do command C or you can go to the top of your screen and do edit copy. We'll go down here to the next slide with the Eiffel Tower and we'll do edit paste or command V. And now very subtly, those globes are also on your screen in the same spot they were before. So now we'll go over here. If you want to, you actually can drag them down a little bit more. That way they're not seen as well. Click on our third image or location. You can also right click and choose paste. Now those are on your screen. Finally, we'll go back up over here to our first slide, right click, add paste. You don't actually need a slide taking you to the first, an image taking you to the first slide anymore because you're already there. So you can click on this one and delete. Then we'll go back out finally to our final slide, right click, choose paste. Same thing here, click on the screen, click on this shape and delete it. Now here's how this works. Click on our slide five, our content slide. When we hit play now, we're giving a presentation. We now have options. We don't have to go in a specific order. So if we want to start with India like we made it, we can or we can start with France. Maybe that's really popular because of the Olympics. So we click on it, it takes us directly to that slide. You could have more slides connected to this. Wherever you're at, you have hidden icons that will take you back. So over here is that globe, really subtle, but we know it's there. Click on it. So I didn't have it set for the correct slide. We wanna make it slide five and make sure on each of these, this is set to go. You can go in here and edit that if it happens to you. Click on the arrow, make sure slide five is where we go. Okay, now we play, click on here. There we go, Eiffel Tower. And we go back to our table of contents. Now we can go to India. People wanna to go to that one next. Again, we click over here on the little globe and we can go over here to Galaxy's Edge. Now any time, let's say we're back talking about the Eiffel Tower and we ran out of time, we know over here we have an icon for the last slide that will take you to your closing slide and you can finish your presentation. You also can use this for a question and answer time where you get to this part of the presentation and they say, hey, can we go back and talk about Galaxy's Edge? Sure, assuming you put the right link on there. If not, click on it, edit, choose five, click on that globe. Now you're back again with two clicks. You're back at the slide you want to be at very easily for a Q&A time. That's how you do a flexible or nonlinear presentation with maps in Apple Keynote for your Mac. For our fourth and final option with maps on Apple Keynote when you're making a presentation, we're going to use what we made earlier. So in your navigator, click on the slide that you used, right click, copy, go down to the very last slide in your presentation, right click and choose paste. We'll go over to the slide. We're not going to use these now. So click on these and delete the flags. And this time we want to show the flight path from a flight going from South America to Europe. And so what we can do is go into the very top of the screen and add a shape. This time we're going to select, we're going to select a plane. 
It brings one on, but that blue is kind of hard to see. So we'll go over here to our inspector, change the color to white, give it a shadow. And then for offset, we're going to make it like it's flying nice and high. So we'll put it at about 25. That looks like that. We'll drag this over here for a minute. And we're going to go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Now we'll come to the top left and choose insert line, draw with pen. So we click on here in South America. We can draw this line up here to France, double click. That finishes the line. Now, probably not gonna be exactly straight, so you can click on this middle point and curve the line a little bit. Now, click anywhere else off the screen, click on the plane, hold the command key down, click on that line, then go up to Format, Shapes and Lines, Make Motion Path from Shape. That's what's gonna tell the plane shape where to fly. It says here to click the shape that will generate the motion path. We're going to choose the line. When you hover over it, it will turn red. So wait for that to happen. Click on it. Now, if we click on our plane, we can click preview, and it will fly the path from South America up. Now we go up here and hit play. When you click or advance the next action, the plane flies. And that would work with a plane, a boat, any shape you want, people across land, a creative way to show movement on your map when you're giving a presentation. Those are four creative ways to work with maps in your keynote presentation. If you'd like to learn more tips on making presentations or get some resources from my store, check out my channel here. You can subscribe and find out when new videos come out, like to let me know this was helpful, or at least some comments. Some of these videos that I make come from ideas from subscribers and viewers like you. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.